Bridging Democracy with Dance. Hello, everyone. My name is Dagmar Spain, and I'm very happy to present this lecture for all of you today. This lecture precedes my innovative experiential workshop, which will be presented on December 18th from 2 to 6 p.m. at the National Czech Slovak Museum and Library in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. My interest in this time of, type of format and content of this lecture is derived from my early upbringings in the Czech Republic and the communist rule Czechoslovakia, my education as a dancer, choreographer, and dance educator, and the understanding of democratic principles, which are fostering peaceful coexistence, respecting cultural differences, and creating awareness on social economically injustices, gender inequalities, and individual rights issues. Democracy as an ideal model for empowered citizenship is a political system of daily practice and dialogic interactions. I work as an educator and dance artist at different institutions worldwide, most recently as a modern dance educator at DanceWorks Berlin, a three-year BFA dance program, and currently at the University of New York in Prague, where I designed the curriculum for the course literature in contemporary society, self-expression through dramatic monologues. And I teach that in the summer program. I'm a movement language specialist and conduct ongoing poetry movement workshops to all populations to unleash the healing power of embodied words. In the, in the US, I've taught at Brown University, Penn State University, and Montclair State University. Currently, I am pursuing my doctoral studies in dance education at Teachers College, Columbia University in New York. My focus there lies in the holistic approach of dance pedagogy, while exploring my ongoing question regarding how the individual is shaped in institutionalized education and different political systems, especially post-communist societies. Being trained primarily as a ballet and modern dancer, uh, I could experience firsthand the authoritarian structures in professional dance training in my generation. As a young teenager, I was inspired by the readings of Socrates and Plato and the approach of dialogue as a discourse in civil society. I realized that dance has historically established uh, very repressive structures Therefore, the positionality between teacher and student was one of unquestionable devotion to the teacher or choreographer, which would finally lead to mastering the dance technique by the student. However, these experiences left many dancers, including me, with internalized traumas of abuse, if not addressed in later years, and hindered many to establish healthy and interdependent relationships as adults. Dance is embedded in the dilemma of being a liberating human expression and at the same time, oppressive power structures in many Western dance styles that I am familiar with in educational settings. The awareness of abuse in dance educational systems and environments led me to rethink pedagogical models that would correlate with a dialogic approach in dance education. Now, what are these models and where do they derive from? I will share my screen now. This lecture focuses on three outlines to answer these questions I just raised. First, democracy in history to present. 
from Aristotelist to European American concepts of democracy were nurtured in the 16th and 17th century. Second, democracy as dialogic principles in dance. Democratic models by Rudolf Laban and Kurt Jos established between World War I and World War II. Third, democracy and dialogue as a practice in daily life with the questions, what do I offer to others and what do others offer to me? Alhenan comes to my mind. He said, the kind of learning that occurs in dialogue is a constantly developing understanding of the world's phenomena, other people, and oneself. By sourcing the roots of democracy, we need to investigate different political systems, pre-democratic governments. Democracy is not found in human history until it's mentioned in ancient Greece. The Athenian Aristotle was the first to introduce the concept of democracy as a full functioning gov governing system. Democracy derives from two Greek roots, demos, meaning the people, and kratis, meaning authority during the fifth century BC. In Europe and the US, liberalism, the key component of democracy, which placed the value of the individual to self-govern, was introduced in the late 17th century and 18th century. One social condition aligned with the values of individualism, democracy became a practical possibility. However, democracy in ancient Greece and the US excluded slaves and women. Democracy was still until the suffrage movements at the end of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century the privilege of some, but not all. In the US, these developments in democratic social conditions emerge faster in comparison to Europe. Democracy as a constitu constitutional idea was established in 1787, after the declaration of Ind independence on July 4, 1776. How to institutionalize it through representatives was in its infant state and manifested itself in the Federalist Papers. No other country in the world could serve as a role model and democracy as becoming part of a nation's constitution was an entirely new concept and a radical new outlook on life. This democracy should ensure The separation of powers, checks and balances, minority rights receive protection, and narrow interests opposed to the general public are curbed. In dialogue, people can turn the difference and strangeness of others into creative incentives to combining their individual shaped imagination, as well as by using the meaning heritage and artistic creation of their culture within their discussion. The creative play in a dialogue, the quintessential democratic systems, make it different from a conversation. Knowledge is co-created and co-discovered in the moment of active exchange. In this dialogic space that needs openness and trust building, dialogue becomes an artistic and skilled undertaking that must be learned and taught. Dialogue can be used as a tool for global citizenship. The dialogic approach is derived from the term dialogic education, which takes place through dialogue by opening up dialogic spaces for the co-construction of new meaning to take place within a gap of different perspectives. Students are encouraged to build on their own and others' ideas in a dialogic classroom, resulting in education through dialogue and education for dialogue. The ideas about dialogic education have been developed over the past 30 years as the term democracy dialogue cannot be taken for granted in democratic political systems. Democracy and dialogues can be, however, learned and actively implemented in schools, organizations, and communities. 
How does democracy feel in our hearts, minds, and bodies? Please take a few minutes to sit comfortably and close your eyes. Take a few gentle breaths, either in through your nose and out through your mouth, or in through your nose and out through your nose. Sense where your breathing travels. How does your breathing help some body parts to talk to each other? Can you listen to them? Trace their dialogue? Who is speaking to whom? Observe. Follow your breath. No judgment, no right or wrong. Only a state of listening. In dialogue, listening is the key component. Please slowly open your eyes. Do you feel different now? Do you feel more aware of your body? Your thoughts, your feelings? Please answer these questions silently to yourself. Respectful dissent. The heart of democracy, as I see it, is dissent. It's dissent that is implied in the vote that we will disagree, but that we will disagree intelligently, respectfully, and productively. And that's where civil, civic dialogue comes in, as a means to intelligent, respectful, and productive dissent. One of the core requirements of true dialogue, according to pollster Dan Daniel Yankolovich, is empathy. The capacity to identify with another person's point of view, even if we do not share that person's point of view. Can we also understand this in terms of our inner dialogue? Do I respect my dissent? Is dissent in our families with intimate partners? communities openly respected? The Bill of Rights, important part of the American constitution. In the first amendment, it says, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition to the government for a redress of grievances. In democratic governments, the rights of the individuals have to be guarded and the right to dissent. We will now focus on three historical figures in the political and cultural arena in the first half of the 20th century in Europe and their specific relationships to democracy. This period of democracy we talk about is between World War I and World War II. The first historic figure is Tomasz Garrick Masaryk politician, statesman, sociologist, and philosopher. He's also the president of the First Republic of Czechoslovakia. The second person is Rudolf Lava, dancer, choreographer, dance woman, theoretician, and scholar, born into the Austrian-Hungarian Empire. And the third one is Kurt Jos, a German dancer and choreographer. Thomas Garrick Masaryk said, democracy is not only a form of government, it is not only what it's written in constitutions, 
Democracy is a view of life addressed on faith in men, in humanity, and in human nature. In a sense, the United States is Czechoslovakia's foster parent. It is upon President Wilson's immortal charter of freedom as embodied in his famous 14 points that the foundation of our state are laid. We have tried to pattern our young republic after our great sponsor, our constitution and our laws, our mode of government, and even our business methods follow closely those of the United States. Thomas Garrick Masaryk was also called the philosopher king or as his son eventually came to see him, scholar saint. Democracy in Europe found its roots after the French Revolution. At the end of the 18th century, and new ideas of go governing swept into the kingdoms and aristocratic reigns of the 19th century. The Austro-Hungarian Empire had a powerful grip on the Czech lands since 1867, and the First World War supported the cause for an independent Czechoslovakia with a constitutional government designed after the American constitution. When Masaryk went into exile in 1914, after the outbreak of World War I to fight Austria in foreign campaigns, he posed himself the question, are we right for freedom, for the administration and maintenance of an independent state? Do we understand this moment in world history? Masaryk was often referred to was often referred as the philosopher king. Why is that? I guess it was his deep thinking and envisioning of new possibilities in government and in society as a whole. And he developed throughout his lifetimes many different political viewpoints. Uh, but especially the First World War and his impact on Europe strengthened his outlook towards an independent Czech Slovak state, finally liberated from centuries of dominance by others. Since 18, 1867 by the Austro-Hungarian Empire and its subsequent oppression of the Czech Slovak people, their culture and language. The collapse of the Austro-Hungarian Empire and the Tsarist regime in Russia opened the possibilities of an independent Czechoslovakia. After World War I, many new political and artistic forms were sought after. The age of Thomas Masaryk, Masaryk was an age of liberalism and nationalism, ide ideologies that called for political freedom and national independence. In this political and cultural climate, Rudolf Laban developed his art of dance and dance pedagogy. He was born into the Hungarian part of the Austro-Hungarian Empire. His understanding of oppressive political uh, structure shaped his democratic models and human approach in dance. It's in the nature of dance that there is a necessity to the relationship to being alive to humanity. Laban was the first person in the Western world to establish a community dance, and he has set out to reform the role of dance education, emphasizing his belief that dance should be made available to everyone. World War I put an end to social positioning, and this was reflected in theater art by discarding the traditional positioning of actors. He removed the hierarchical system of ballet companies and replaced it with a democratic ensemble. He established choreology, the discipline of dance analysis, and invented a system of dance notation now known as Laban notation or kinetography Laban. 
Laban created a dance literacy based on a 20 year long research. He developed the so-called movement sentences and movement choirs. Rudolf Laban identified four most important components of movements, body, effort, shape, and space. Laban's legacy is a spirit of inquiry. Dance literacy based sorry. Kurtios was the dedicated student of Rudolf Laban and further developed his ideas to integrate into his choreographies, which were motivated by the political conditions of his time between World War I and World War II. Joost was a famous German ballet dancer and choreographer, mixing ballet movements with theater. He is the founder of the term Tanztheater, which also became famous with the German choreographer Pina Bausch, who died in 2009 and is worldwide famous to this day. He trained in dance from 1920 to 1924 with Rudolf Laban as a dedicated student. He became the director and choreographer for the avant-garde new dance stage at the theater in Essen, Germany. There he choreographed the Green Table in 1932 which won first prize in the choreographic competition organized by the International Archives of Dance in Paris. We will look now, before we watch the green table, at two shapes that might inform us about democracy, author authoritarianism. Which shape would you think is more appropriate for democracy? Which shape is more appropriate for authoritarian systems or dictatorships? You can just look at that, think about it, no right or wrong answer. Before we also watch the movements themselves in the green table, I would like you to think about democracy and movements. How can we relate a political system to movements? What qualities would these movements have? How would they look like? I gave one example, flexible like a rubber band. Authoritarianism, authoritarianism and movements. What qualities would these movement have? How do they look like? My example, rigid like a piece of metal. Any thoughts that you have, just share with yourself at this point. Now we will watch the green table. The green table reflects a concern for social issues and the problems of that era, shared by many artists contemporaries with yours, such as political corruption and militaristic policies, its style with its cutting irony, caricature, and boldness of language has much in common with expressionism, which flourished in the first decade of the 20th century. I will stop sharing with you for a moment and start resharing with you the video. We will watch it only the first few minutes and please look at the movements, the expression of the movements, maybe the emotional qualities of the movements, also the forms, maybe of uh, whatever forms you see in the body or maybe in the props that you see. And just have a little inner dialogue with what you see.
So we will stop here. It continues, of course, many more sections, but I think we got a, an idea about the green table. And I will just share with you one more. Sorry. Yes, here we go. So thank you for listening. And I hope you enjoyed this recorded lecture and I would love to hear your feedback. Here is my email address, so please write it down. And again, the reminder, my in-person workshop will be on December 18th, 2 to 6 p.m. at the National Czechoslovak Museum and Library in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We will explore some movements, some movements related to democratic principles and dialogic approaches in movement and especially have fun together and learn. Uh, and there is no uh, you know, prior knowledge uh, uh, necessary of dance or movements. So please, anybody can join. Thank you for listening again. Have a wonderful day, week, until we meet possibly in December. <laughs>